Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday morning to you, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. All right, uh, July 11th through the 13th, Ardmore, Oklahoma, Preterist Pilgrim Weekend 2019. Our theme is how to know we're not living in the last days. You don't want to miss this. Okay, we are continuing our study of study of the Olivet Discourse. I've spent a good bit of time on Matthew 24 and verse 3 and the question of the disciples because there, there is such a wide, widely held view that the disciples, when they asked Jesus in response to his prediction of the fall of Jerusalem, now look folks, there's no question whatsoever that that's what Jesus was predicting, right? Do you not see all of these things? The time is coming in which not one stone shall be left standing on top of another. That's the subject. That's what prompted the disciples' question. It is therefore completely untenable, completely improper, to interject another subject into what Jesus has just said. He has just predicted the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. The disciples react to that by saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of your coming, parousia, and the end of the age? I shared with you yesterday that a, that a comparison with Mark and Luke shows us the disciples were only asking one thing. Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign when all these things will take place? It's that simple. It is, once again, it is improper to inject a totally different, radically different subject into the discussion without some overwhelming contextual proof and demand to do so. Well, the disciples asked about Jesus' parousia, translated as coming. Now, this Greek word is used 24 times in the New Testament by my count, in the Englishman's Greek Concordance. Some say 26 times, by my count is 24. I may have missed something, okay? Point of fact is that this, this word, number one, I mean, we want to be objective, we want to be honest. This word can mean literal presence. Paul spoke about his presence, for instance, with the Philippians. No question whatsoever, he was talking about his physical bodily presence. No question. But the question is, is that what the disciples had in mind? Because, let's not forget, that the entire prophetic background knowledge of the apostles was that the coming of the Lord in the Old Testament was never a literal, visible, bodily reality. We've taken a lot of time in establishing that. I've shown you that a related, not a synonym, but a related word, prosopon, as used in the Septuagint of the Old Testament, it is translated as presence. It means literally face. So it's very related to parousia, which means presence. Prosopon, parousia. Once again, they're not the same word, but they denote the same kind of thing, presence. So, then we ask the question, and by the way, this will be a little bit of a rehearsal, reiteration of what we saw before, but it's important to do this. What had Jesus said about his coming prior to Matthew 24 that would have caused the disciples to think about an end of time, end of the Christian age, into the cosmos. Where do we find such a concept in Matthew prior to Matthew 24 and verse 3? Very quickly, Jesus sent his disciples out on the limited commission. And he told them, you're going to be hated by all men for my name's sake. Those who endure unto the end shall be saved. When they chase you from city to city, okay, now notice this. Many people say, well, the disciples would not have finished the world commission before the Lord comes. The world mission has not been completed. Therefore, Matthew 10 is about our future. No, that completely misses the point. Jesus was talking to his 
living apostles. Matthew 10, first couple of verses, that's who he called. That's who he sent. And he said to them, they're going to persecute you. They're going to chase you from city to city. Now watch. You will not have gone through the, all of the cities of Israel. Gone through all the cities doing what? Fleeing from that persecution. Until the Son of Man is come. It is not simply about preaching the gospel. It is them, his apostles, fleeing from that ensuing persecution. And before they had fled completely through the cities of Jerusalem, of Israel, the Son of Man would come. That means it would be in their lifetime. Well, watch this. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus said, Woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee. Under the Bethsaida. If the mighty works that had been done in you would have been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented sackcloth and ashes long ago. Do you see what Jesus is saying? Now watch. Okay. It shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you, you Capernaum, who are exalted unto the heavens, will be brought down to Hades. Now then, segue over to Matthew chapter 12 very, very quickly. And Jesus said, verse 41 and following, the men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation. Next verse, the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it. Condemn what? This generation. Now, the argument is sometimes made, well, yes, it says that uh, Nineveh and Queen of the South would condemn, rise up in the judgment, but it doesn't say when that judgment would be. Well, let me ask you the question. In Matthew chapter 23, the lead into chapter 24, Jesus said that all of the blood of all of the righteous, all of the blood shed on the earth all the way back to righteous Abel would be judged. And he said, verily I say unto you, this generation or all of these things will come upon this generation. So was that generation to be judged? Even Thomas Ice admits Matthew 23 is talking about A.D. 70. So, Matthew 23 is talking about the judgment of that generation. Oh, but wait. Uh, Tyre and Sidon, Chorazin, Bethsaida, Bethsaida, the queen of the south would all rise up with that generation when? In the judgment, but the judgment of Israel, the judgment of that generation would be well, in that generation, that's the coming of Christ. You reckon the disciples understood? Where's the indication that they did not? Okay, Matthew chapter 13, we spent some time on it. Matthew chapter 13, the Son of Man would come, send out his angels. They would gather together the elect. That's when the righteous would shine forth as the kingdom in fulfillment of Daniel chapter 12. So the, the coming of the Son of Man would be in fulfillment of Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12 would be, quote, when the power of the holy people was completely shattered. That was in A.D. 70. Thus, the coming of the Son of Man was in A.D. 70. Matthew 16. The Son of Man will come in the glory of the Father with His angels and shall reward every man according to His works. Now watch this. Is that the judgment of Matthew 11, 21 and following? Is it the judgment of Matthew 12, 41 and following? Well, of course it is. The Son of Man will come in the glory of the Father with His angels and shall reward every man according to His works. And verily I say unto you, some standing here, will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. When would Jesus come? In judgment, in judgment of all men, before all of that audience died. When would Jesus come? In the judgment of Tyre and Sidon, Sodom, Gomorrah, Chorazin, Bethsaida. 
And by the way, some of those are purely Gentile cities and nations. So what do we have? Oh, and by the way, I haven't even mentioned 20, Matthew 21 in the parable. When the wicked husband persecuted and killed the servant sent to them, the master said, the master of that vineyard will, quote, come and destroy those miserable servants. And the Pharisees understood Jesus was talking about them. The Lord was coming to destroy them. Well, guess what? They no longer exist. They were destroyed in AD 70. So what do we find? We find in every reference up to Matthew chapter 24, every reference to the coming of the Lord in the book of Matthew, prior to Matthew chapter 24, the disciples had heard Jesus teach unequivocally, undeniably, and irrefutably that his coming. Now, the Greek word parousia is not used prior to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3. But unless you're willing to say that the Greek word erkomai is not the same as, you know, one's a verb, one's a noun. But unless you're, unless you're willing to completely, totally divorce erkomai from parousia, by the way, that's just not tenable, then that means that in every reference to Jesus' is coming prior to Matthew 24, we have very clear teaching that it was to occur in that generation. Where then did the disciples get the idea that Jesus, in predicting the fall of Jerusalem, which, according to Matthew 23, was the time of the judgment of Israel, which, according to Matthew 11 and Matthew 12, is the time of the judgment, which, according to Matthew 16, is the time of the judgment of all men, where would the disciples have gotten any idea of an end-of-time, earth-burning, cosmos-destroying event? Well, guess what? They would never, ever, ever have had such an idea. Hey, go to my website and order the book, We Shall Meet Him in the Air, The Wedding of the King of Kings. Uh, yes, I discuss all of this in that book and a whole lot more. So or, go to my website, donkpreston.com, BibleProphecy.com, and order that book, and be sure to mention that you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping. All right? Now, tomorrow, we're going to look at this term. You know, when, what should be the sign of the end of the age? Wow, this is important. So I'll see you on the flip side.